Acts chapter 4. And as they spake unto the people. Now remember, they're at the temple. As they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. Oh, here comes the trouble. Being grieved that they taught the people. Well, who gives them the right? This is our temple. It ain't God's temple. They're not supposed to be here doing this. You're not supposed to be on the city streets preaching the Bible. Get out of here. And the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people, and preached to Jesus the resurrection from the dead. There they go. And that's the third part of the gospel. Christ died for us. Christ died according to the scripture, was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scripture. The gospel's being preached. It's being preached on the steps at the temple. They're street preachers. They are not wanted by the by the magistrates. They're not wanted by the higher ups. Perfect street preaching. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold, a prison kind of thing, unto the next day, for it was even time. And according to chapter 3, verse 1, this has been at least three hours they've been preaching. Three hours of preaching. I've been thinking, man, I should go about three hours instead of 45 minutes. And they were teaching and preaching. I try to do both. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. Now that's, that's a quite a bit of a congregation. Quite a bit of people who, who believe. But remember, this story is current events for the people of Israel. They just, within not even 50 days, 50 days, had seen and heard about Jesus being crucified. Now the news comes up. He's resurrected. He's been seen by all these people. They know that these are the chief priests. These are the Sadducees. They're coming. They know that these are the ones that put Jesus to Pilate. This is still current events. This is still live in their heads. It's on their minds. It's in their heart. It's still being talked about. It's yesterday's news. And it came to pass on the morrow, the next day, that the rulers and elders and scribes, and Anus, the high priest, and Caiaphas, well, that's the one who had Jesus. That's the one that brought Jesus before him and had Jesus give an account. And John and Alexander, watch out for Alexander names. And as many as were the kindred of the high priest. Oh, he thought he's got his whole family there. Kindred of the high priest. These would be the children of Aaron. The ordained priesthood that God has set up by Moses in the book of Moses, in the law, here they are now fighting against God's people. These people ain't Levites. They're not priests. Who do they think they are by delivering this word about this man that we crucified, we got rid of, and now they're preaching him in the temple? How dare they? Well, that's exactly what Jesus done. All they did was pick up Jesus' ministry. So when somebody comes up to me, as a personal testimony that I can speak about and say, well, you're not doing what the Bible tells you to do. Jesus would never do that. Not only did Jesus do that, but so did his disciples. Preaching on the streets and call to the record, if I would really follow the Bible, the Bible says go to their temples, go before the people and preach to them. You want a great congregation? If I want a congregation of Roman Catholics, wait for them coming out of church, stand there on the sidewalk and preach to those Roman Catholics and say, hey, they attended my church this morning. Now, the magistrates may put me in jail, but the Bible says, hey, that's where the people are. Go. Wisdom stands out in the street. She cries in the chief places. She goes to the, the places of concord. She yells her voice out about the gospel. Man, if I can ever get a work schedule settled out and all that, woe be to the people around here. These men walk into a Jewish temple and start preaching the Jewish Messiah. 
And so what? The people are not happy and the people don't care. There was added 5,000 men. 5,000 men that you're going to see in glory. And it came to pass on the morrow that the rulers, the scribes, the elders, and the scribes, and Ananias, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. Oh, they called a special meeting for these guys. When you preach Jesus, you're going to cause a ruckus. And when they had set them in the midst, they come, they're in a room. I don't know how they're seated, but Peter and John are sat right in the middle of these people. In the midst. And, add, and they ask, what power or by what name have you done this? Deuteronomy 13, 8 is a note. What are you guys doing? What is this name we hear? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost. Peter's third message. He's preached to a group of men gathered at Pentecost. He's preached to the crowd outside the temple. Now he's preaching to the higher of, of Jerusalem. Peter has come a long way. Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, that's the man in chapter 3, the guy who, who's lame. Listen, if you call us up on charges of what we did to that guy, what happened to that guy? The guy joyfully jumping around? By what means he is made whole? Now, that's kind of remarkable, Peter, because all you're doing is reminding them what Jesus did. And all the times they got angry when Jesus heals, he did it on the Sabbath. Mm. Now his people are doing it. His followers are doing it. Be it known unto you all that to all the people of Israel that by... You want the name? The name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now that was not a prick to these people that hated Jesus. And this is not to the, the unhappy religious crew that Jesus worked miracles in front of. Now they're seeing Peter and John are doing, are, are doing these things. You didn't get rid of Jesus. Though you put him on a cross, though you put him in a graveyard, the resurrection, you didn't get rid of him. <clears throat> Nazareth, that marks the Jewishness. Nazareth. I don't have the Jesus Christ in Nazareth. I have the Jesus Christ that's seated at the right hand of the Father. Whom ye crucified. Oh, Peter. Oh. Who killed, who killed Jesus? What did Peter say? Uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Verse 8. Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto him, Ye crucified Jesus. Who killed, P who killed Peter? Who killed Jesus? The Holy Spirit said those priests. Is the Holy Spirit lying or is the Holy Spirit telling the truth? The charge went to the high priest. They're the ones that had him arrested in the garden. They're the ones that had them brought to Pilate. They're the ones that screamed for the people to say crucify him. They're the ones that allowed him to go on that cross. They're charged. They're the ones that paid Judas. Too. They're the ones that paid Judas on top of it. And then the ones, oh, you know, we got we we got to clean ourselves because we got the feast day coming. Oh. And notice Peter has not picked up a sword since the garden. Man, he is letting the Holy Spirit wrap it. Come on. He's looking at these, these delicates, these religious people. Holy honor. Oh, you killed Jesus. You know how angry they got with, with Stephen? They said they chewed on the preacher. They didn't, you know, the expression, chewed out the preacher. Stephen, they literally chewed him. Now they probably want to do it to Peter. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God has raised from the dead. All right, you, you killed him, but God said, they ain't done. 
Christianity began at that at that open tomb when the angel said, "He's not here. He's risen." There it is. That's the sign, seal, and deliver. I want you guys, Peter saying, I want you guys to go back and look at all the high priests that were killed, and you go look in their graveyards. They're still there. Go down and look at the graveyard where Jesus was. He ain't there. Your authority as the priest, as the high priest, and as the, uh, the, the priest and the rulers and the scribes, your authority is no more. How come you guys didn't help that lame man? How many years did he sit at that temple and then you guys walked by? Remember the parable that Jesus said about the, the good Samaritan? The, the priest went by. Ooh, get away from that guy. And then the Levite walked by. Ugh, I'm going to walk around that bar. And then the Samaritan came and said, I'll take care of him. These priests, these scribes, these rulers did not care about the sheep. They wanted their own personal finding. Then comes Jesus who cared about them. Then comes Jesus who loved them. Then comes Peter and John. Uh, uh, yeah, and they said, listen, I ain't got no money to give you, but I'll tell you what, in the name of Jesus, rise. What else could be more, more beneficial for a guy that he can now walk or here's a few dollars to go get yourself a Big Mac or something? This guy now can walk. He doesn't need people to carry him out. Would you preach still? Jesus did that. Notice Peter does not take the credit. Man, if this was the Pope, the Pope would take all the credit. He wears on his head the, the insignia of the Bible states that he's the Holy Father. You're the Holy Macro, the Holy Bologna, and you ain't my father. He's like big on the fish. Yeah. So he says, Jesus of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God has raised from the dead, even by him, does this man stand here whole, stand before you whole? They brought the guy that they healed into the courtroom. You see him? Calm down. I know you're happy. Just calm down, will you? Jesus did that. And we read all through the Gospels. That did not please them. That did not make them happy. This guy's probably still jumping up now. He probably has not sat down in 24 hours. He's probably stretching his legs, kicking his legs up, smiling. You can see Peter and John, they're sitting there smiling. This guy's smiling. They 5,000 people are giving themselves to Christ. And these guys sitting around here. <laughs> This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. And that's the stone that you read about in Daniel. Peter knows his Bible. He's saying, listen, that, that stone that you just rejected, that's going to come back and that's going to grind your butt. That's going to destroy you. Now, this is a verse I always try to remember. Now watch what Peter says here. Ready? Repent and be baptized. Absolutely not. Now let's look. Acts 2.38, he said, repent and be baptized after preaching the gospel. In chapter 3, he says, uh, well, he was preaching the gospel again. He said, repent, verse 19, ye therefore be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Now he says, Neither is there salvation in any other. Wait a minute. If Peter's the Pope, why is there salvation in Mary? He just gave credit to this man walking, jumping, and kicking up his legs, having a good old time. He just gave the credit to Jesus Christ and said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name. What name has been the topic? It's been Jesus. So how does a religion defy itself from the Bible is when there's no other name to be saved but Mary, Michael, Jehoshaphat, uh, uh, St. Peter, and whoever else you want to do, Christopher, and the 100 million other saints by that church. When Jesus says there is none other, I mean, Peter says there is none other name under heaven given among men 
whereby we must, well, look at it, we must be saved. Wow, Peter, your message is getting stronger. Peter just said, if you don't believe on Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. He didn't say anything about purgatory. The way to be saved, now, now let's match this with Paul. Now we're getting closer. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ almost matches now Peter in Acts 4.12. His third message is getting closer and closer to Paul's message. And he's preaching to the Sanhedrin. He's preaching to the priests. And he looks at those priests in the eyes. And I guarantee he's in their eyes. And he says, there's no other name but that name that you crucified. By the way, God's raised him from the dead. He just told those priests, you're going to hell. Unless you believe on Jesus Christ and repent. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter, you see that? Man, he's on fire. And John, I don't know what John was doing. It said Peter was the one preaching. I can see John, yes, go, 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 brother, go. And perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. Uh-oh. They didn't have seminary training. They didn't come from Aaron. They were just fishermen in Nazareth, Galilee. Ibby dooby doo, who do you think you are? And those with PhDs and those with doctors and those, many of them that come from seminary are going to be the ones that are going to be cast off in the hell. Not all. I didn't say all of them, but many of them will be. And you look at the men that God has chosen to be his preacher throughout history. They're nobodies. They're nothing. They're ball players. They're peanut farmers. They're low of sort. People of humbleness. This is a high degree meaning here that they're calling these scumbags into to be judged of them. Really? And they're ignorant. They marveled. They marveled. As I turn my page. And they took knowledge of them. I thought they were ignorant. And yet they learned something. Then they're not stupid. They're not stupid if they know if they learned something from you because that they had been with Jesus. You know the world knows that your healing ministry is fraud because you haven't been with Jesus. And when you go into the ministry and you do whatever God has called you to do, if you are of God and Bible doctrine. They will take knowledge that there's something different about you from any other thing. And when I stand on the street corner and preach the gospel, they're saying, that guy does not sound like a radio preacher. I do not hear that message in my own church. There is something about that guy I can't turn on the TV set and hear him scream at us. I don't see the men in the Bible, the prophets and the, and the uh, apostles and Jesus Christ. You squeeze little men, you open your Bible. I mean, I bet you they holler. I bet you they scream. I bet they spit. But there's one thing to be seen. They will take knowledge. There's something about you, and that's something about you. Better be Jesus. You better be careful because Paul tells us that there's another Jesus out there. What's that, Jesus? You take off your coat and everyone starts falling on the ground because you haven't used right guard. Oh, that's supposed to be healing. You mumble jumble. I've seen no mumble jumble in the Bible. And beholding the man which was healed standing with him. Look, he, st he hasn't sat down. Ooh, I like my ankle legs. He just said, you see, boys? You see, that was the problem right there, my ankle. See that? I'm standing. That they could say nothing against it. Now that's a sign from God. So they brought Peter and John into that assembly for two reasons. This guy was healed, maybe on a Sabbath, I don't know. And that they were preaching Jesus. What did this guy do wrong that they had to haul him off in court? 
I'll tell you what they held him in. He's glorifying God too much and people are watching him. <coughs> but when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. All right, you guys, just step out of here for a moment. We're going to talk amongst ourselves. We're going to deliberate. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred with it amongst themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that, indeed, a notable miracle has been done by them, is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. We cannot deny it. That guy was lame. They, they certified to you by the Holy Spirit in chapter 4. That guy was not faking. They certified to you that man was lame. And now he's walking about and we can't say nothing about it. It is beyond our decree to say that medicine and the priest could not help him. That's a medical doctor, Acts chapter 1, that wrote this book. This is not like the people outside of Walmart. You say, what are you talking about? You come deal with me. I'll show you about the people outside Walmart. Each and every time we see them, we mark them as fraud. This guy has been declared by the priest, by the Sanhedrin of the Jewish people. There is no fraud. This would be, this would be like today. If they were going to a cancer ward in a hospital, say, that person has definitely got cancer. And come back later and say, that person has been, listen, that person certified had cancer, and now we see absolute no cancer in them. But we certified it was there. Now it isn't there. Remember the remember the blind man? I forget what I forget what chapter John was. Remember that the neighborhood took the, him to the priest? That was certification that, hey, you were blind, now you can see. And they tried to change that whole story to make it look like he couldn't see. They tried to change that guy that was blind, but they can't make no mistake about this guy. This guy, from the womb, when he was born, was unable to walk. There was something wrong with his leg. They certified it. And now they certify that Jesus, according to Peter, made that guy walk. So this guy, when he when there's something about his leg, you just look at. Uh -uh. No, he can't walk. Sorry. Now we can't. Now he's standing over there. There's there's no denying. Leaping. Leaping. But that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightway threaten them that they should speak henceforth to no man in this name. All right. Now we step aside. All right. The healing happened, but. We got we got to get rid of this name. They they can't say Jesus. Yeah, but the guy that slips his his knuckles on a wrench in a car and bangs it on a radiator grill, good oh, Christ! Oh, he gets up in the middle of the night to make the bathroom trip and spums his little toe on it. Oh, it's your eyes out. It's amazing how we can use the name of Jesus Christ and then other times we can't mention the name of Jesus. They can't even say the name Jesus. They're afraid that this word, excuse me, you've already said the word has gotten out in Jerusalem. You're going to stop something that's already happened? And they called them. Peter and John and the guy is now walking and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. We don't want to hear it. When it comes to that Jesus, shut up. Go ahead. You can speak politics. You can speak sports, but you cannot speak Jesus. Ask my family, have you heard that 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016? Yes. They don't want to hear Jesus. But man, if I brought out hot dogs and beer and a little boogie woogie music. Commanded not to speak at all, speak nor teach. They don't want the preaching and they don't want the teaching. 
But Peter and John answered. So how, somehow John is saying stuff too. We're not being recorded what John has said. There's so much in the Bible that we don't know. John is saying stuff too with Peter. But Luke is not recorded for some reason. The Holy Spirit does not want us to know. So somebody is going to, oh, I heard Brother Stoller say that John, we got to go find the lost words of John. But Peter and John answered, said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. Come on, priest. If God told us to, to preach it, if Jesus, who is God, told us to preach it, who do you think we're supposed to believe? You or God? You guys ain't doing it. We got to do it. You don't even believe who Jesus was. Of course we're going to preach Jesus. Because we know who he was. We know what he is. And we know what he will be. You guys won't. You guys don't even know who he is. So guess what? We're going to obey God. <coughs> and it comes down to the question is. If my employer or if, if my public officials tell me not to preach Jesus what am I supposed to do what did God say and you know what you may have to take a beating but Peter worked out pretty good in the book of Acts then he? he ended up with two books in his name John worked out great he has a whole gospel he has three epistles and he has revelation what if Peter and John said okay fine we'll listen to you we won't preach his name no more Now, there was a employer I had. I couldn't speak politics, couldn't speak Jesus. I don't know why I was fired. Constitution in this country says I have the freedom of speech. I'm willing to fight. No business has the power over the Constitution of this country. And I'll take you on in the power of God. I will say, God, I'm going to preach your word. I'm going to preach Jesus Christ. I'll take the beatings, but I know you'll be there for me. I may come to the day in America. They may put me in jail. They may put me before a courthouse. Why shouldn't we? America has been too easy, too relaxed. They forgot that our Baptist ancestors were put in jail. Our Baptist ancestors had property confiscated. Our Baptist ancestors were killed in America. We've been too relaxed. That's why the church hasn't grown, because there's no persecution anymore. We got rights, and we got a full Bible written for us, and we don't do anything about either or. Oh, but of our gun rights, we'll speak more about gun rights than we will about Christian rights. And you can say that about the guns, too. More for Jesus than your damn guns. I approve of that message. For we cannot but speak the things we have seen and heard. It's a personal testimony. What is the best testimony you can tell a lost man? Take the date you were saved. You know what happened. I have told my personal testimony, I don't know, countless times. It's recorded a video and all that. I've had people look at me in the face after I told my personal story and told me I was a liar. You weren't there. I remember still this day of things I don't remember. I remember still today, that Saturday night, man, how clean I felt for the first time ever in my life. I couldn't believe how much I wanted to go. I wanted to go to church before I got saved, but how much I wanted to be in church that next day. I have the personal testimony in my heart to tell people what can Jesus can do. You don't believe it because you have not believed Jesus. But, man, you taste Jesus and find out, whoa. So these people, John and Jane, um, Peter and John, are just speaking what they've seen. The best testimony you've got is your personal testimony. And I'm going to warn you, people will call you a liar. But we cannot, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So it's a personal testimony. And the gospel. 
So when they have further threatened them, not recording what they did, how they did it, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them. Because the people, they're afraid of the people. There's people fears. For all men glorified God for that which was done. Wait a minute, glorify, they didn't glorify the first pope? You mean they didn't carry him around in a, in a bulletproof buggy? Imagine a God riding around in a bulletproof buggy. He's God. Who, who are you afraid he's going to shoot? The glory went all to God. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, John. God did it all. And that's another thing. Not only your testimony. I've heard plenty of testimonies over the year. And people will get up and it'll be me, myself, and I. Always about them. Everything they did, they, it is God's left out. That's no testimony. I'm sorry to say, without Jesus Christ, I think my life would be in total ruins if I would have a life today. I know my liver would have been shot. I know my lungs would have been gone. I'm clean. I'm living. I'm alive. I got hope. Even in trouble. Even when I do have despair. Even though I do have fears. I still got that hope. Let's see you do that with your alcohol. You ain't got no hope. Maybe a day. Maybe overnight. But then it, your hope disappears. My hope is forever. That they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. And when for the man was above 40 years old. Imagine, over 40 years old, this, this, he's lame. He's been carried to that temple, who knows how long, on whom this miracle of healing was showed. 40. That's a number of testing in the Bible. Israel is being tested right now. What are they going to do with Jesus? You know what they did in that 40 years with God and Moses? Man, they blew it. They died on the way. And their children got in. And they messed up. And being let go, they went to their own company. And it doesn't say church. They went to their own company, the other apostles. And reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. <laughs> hey, boys, guess what happened to us there? What? What? This is what happened. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made the heaven and earth... Not Darwin, not evolution, and the sea and all that in uh, all that in them is. That's really bad English. So, not only do we have the God that died and was buried and rose from the grave, we've also got the God that created all things. That throws out theistic evolution. Amazing what you learn, and they're praising God. They're going back to, to the book of Moses. They're going to Genesis 1 and saying, God, hallelujah, you made it all. It's almost like they started their own Bible study, and they opened up Genesis 1. In the beginning, God, amen, glory to God, God made it. Yeah, he's so great. Whom by the mouth of thy servant David, has said, why do the heathen rage? Who <laughs> call them those priests and all that heathen? They're Jewish people. Heathen, the Gentile, the dead dogs. Why are they raging? And the people imagined vain things. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord. United Nations. Including the President of the United States. And against his Christ, Jesus. For of a truth, against thy holy child, Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel, were gathered together. Jesus, on that morning from, from the garden, to the cross, he gathered a vast nation of people before him. 
He had the Jews and he had the Gentiles, and they were all against him. It says somewhere Pilate and Herod made, made friends with each other, but other times they weren't friends. I'm, I'm not quoting that verse correctly. There was a, 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 a battle between Herod and Pilate, but because of Jesus, they came together in love. And the Jews were angry with him too, because the priests were told for envy, and the Jews, he didn't give them bread for the rest of their years. He didn't give them fish for all their life. The Romans were still in charge in 70 A.D. For of truth against thy holy child, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate and the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. Everything that the chief priest done, everything that Judas done, everything that Pontius Pilate done, everything that Herod done, everything that Peter done, everything that the disciples left him was all predetermined by God and God knew it. Jesus said to the men in the garden, hey, let them go. Because the Bible says, you, you, you know, smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Let them go. That's scripture. That's got to happen. You got to bring me to Herod. You got to bring me to Pilate because I can't be stoned. I got to be lifted up. So you don't realize when Jesus walked on this earth, he knew everything was going to happen before it even happened. Lying in that manger, he knew exactly what was going to happen. In that garden, when he prayed to, for the Father's will, he prayed for that cup, he knew what was going to happen 24 hours. He already told Peter, he says, listen, you're going to deny me. Jesus knew that. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that which all boldness they may speak thy word. We need help, Lord. Because now they're against us. They've threatened us. God, help us. You better pray for those who are going out in the world to preach the gospel however God has told them to do it. Even knocking on doors. Even passing out gospel tracts. By stretching forth thy hand to heal the man that was lame, that signs and wonders may be done by the name of that holy child Jesus gets the credit again. It's always Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. Another sign, another miracle, another wonder. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Lord help them. He answered their prayer. Now I'm sorry to say when I knelt down in April 1987 at my grandma's house, there was no shaking. But I'll tell you what the Bible said. The Holy Ghost came into me. He said, okay, Father, he's ours. I'm staying here with him. I'm his comforter. And I'm going to pray for this young man because he's going to need it. And Jesus acknowledged the comforter, said, I hear you, comforter. And I'm up here with the Father, and I'm going to pray for him too. This guy is going to open his mouth for us, Father. Holy Spirit and Jesus get together and say, we're going to pray for him. Because his life is not going to be easy. And we're going to give him a boldness to preach. And God's given me a boldness with loudness to preach. Now, I'm not claiming this for him. I'm just saying that's what God's given me. My prayer to God is, hey, God, help me. Hey, God, help me to be bold. When people are getting in my face. When people are trying to distract me. It's easy to get distracted. When you got, when you got a man in your face keeps yelling one word at you for five to ten minutes, man, your mind goes off. 
And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart, unity, and one soul, unity. Neither said any of the them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common, unity by God through the Holy Ghost. They didn't separate each other. They didn't backbite each other. They helped each other. With great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of Lord Jesus. There's that resurrection of the Lord Jesus and gave grace was upon them all. So what are they doing now? They're going out. They're preaching Jesus is alive. What did the chief priests, what did the, the religious leaders say? They want the dead Jesus. They want the Jesus that someone came and stole their stole his body. Which goes to show you that when Jesus was alive and was on this planet, after his resurrection, he didn't show up to anybody who did not believe. These people are assembled here, they are meeting together, getting power of God. They seen. The Bible says, four, I think it's 400 men saw the resurrected Christ. Those 400 men are now going out and say, I saw him. And they're being, you're a liar. Well, fine, don't believe it. I know what I saw. You guys are filled with new grape juice and all that. Well, fine. You think what you want to think, but I know. And when you stand in the great white throne judgment and I stand on the other side, believe what you want. But I know. I know. With great power, neither was there any among them that lacked. I wish I had that. I, th I lack faith. I lack trust. Oh, you thought that was material things. Now, that's power. That's grace. That's mercy. I lack those. For as many as were processors of lands or houses sold them. And brought the prices of the things that were sold. They're starting to sell their property. They're starting to sell their possessions. They're selling their camels. They're moving out of Jerusalem because they're not wanted no more. They can't do business no more. They can't get amongst the Jews no more because they're hated. These men have left houses. They have left property. They have left family for God, Jesus Christ. Sell it. And no one has ordered, no one has commanded them to do this, by the way. So if you walk into a church and they tell you sell everything you got, they're living out of Acts chapter 5, and that's not the church age. And you don't believe me? Go look it up. Go look up the religions that tell them to sell things. And they get in one compound or whatever you want to call it. Oh, that came, yeah, see, everyone, you have to sell all your stuff. You have to sell all your possessions. That's what it says in Acts chapter 5. You didn't study to show that self approved on the God. Because they were not commanded. They knew the state that they were in, living in Israel. They're outcasts. They've been cast away. That blind man in, in the Gospel of John, he can never go back and do what he can do. He's blind, but he can't make a living no more. You ever think about that? Where is he going to get a job? Oh, you want to work? Wait a minute, aren't you the one that the chief priest kicked out of the temple? Yeah. You're the one that believes that Jesus? Yeah. Brother, get out of here right now. You get away from me. I ain't losing my temple service. And I have money. To, I have parts to do with this. Get out of here. Just get out of here. I'll call the priest. I was. I know a Jewish man. His family had a mock funeral because he believed on Jesus Christ as his Savior. He is dead to his family. Don't tell me. They can't do business no more. They're selling it all. They're probably not even getting the proper price. Probably getting taken advantage of and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribute was made unto every man according as he had need. They don't have no more money. They had no more job. They had no more family. The church helped them survive. If this was the government, you would call it welfare. The church is helping those in the church. The people who are saved, the people who are, who are living for God, doing right, the church is helping them. Who's the church helping today? There are probably God-dedicated, loving Christians that do right in the eyes of God, need help in their church and supporting shoes, shoe boxes, and crayons 
to China and not the people that need it. I've been to churches. And Joseph, watch this, who by the apostles were surnamed Bar Barnabas. Uh-oh, there's Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, exhortation. Ooh, look at that for a name, exhortation. A Levite. Now, he wasn't a priest. All priests had to be Levites, but not all Levites were priests. A Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. He can't go back to that temple. He can't go back to synagogue no more. He's not welcome. So what's God do with Barnabas? Isn't he the one who goes out with Paul later and starts out churches? And man, his name is great in the book of Acts. You let God take care of your life and don't worry. Jesus said, fear him that can kill and destroy your body in hell. Stand up for God. Now listen, I ain't telling you to go to your employer and be an idiot and stuff like that. There's proper way. When you're on the clock, you're supposed to work on the clock. But you got lunchtime. You got breaks. You got after work. You got before work. When you're on that clock, you do your work. But no one can stop you from preaching Jesus. No one. Well, I lost my job. Peter said... I'd rather obey God. Going all the world, preach the gospel. I, I know a guy who went to jail. Well, that's the consequences. You'll get that in Romans 13. And so, you know, there's a difference between man's law and God's law. Sometimes man's law goes against God's law. And then there's consequences. And for that, you got the you got Fox's Book of Martyrs.